In my first presentation, I suggested that the invention by the ancient Greeks of the first true phonetic alphabet was instrumental in the expansion and spread of knowledge within their culture. Their alphabet was relatively easy to learn and efficient to use. It allowed authors to make a permanent record of their intellectual pursuits, and those manuscripts could be copied so that others could read them. Knowledge grows most rapidly when a large collection of people with similar interests can share their ideas and can continually debate, revise, or confirm each other's propositions and theories. The next big advance didn't happen for another 2,000 years or so. Then, in 1436, Gutenberg invented the printing press, and it was a game changer. It allowed for a flourishing of intellectual activity among a growing community of scientists who could now easily communicate with each other through widely distributed books and journals. In this way, the printing press helped bring about the scientific revolution by allowing scientists and scholars to share their knowledge. As we begin our discussion now of the scientific revolution itself, we will see that these four astronomers shown here have starring roles. First, we want to talk about Copernicus and Galileo. Next time, we will talk about Tycho Brahe and Johannes Kepler before moving on to look at the work of the man himself, Sir Isaac Newton. Copernicus developed a very sophisticated heliocentric model of the universe. In other words, he proposed that the Earth and the planets revolved around the Sun in contradiction to Ptolemy's model. His work was published in the year of his death, 1643. Although several well-known astronomers at the time came to accept Copernicus's model, the majority still favored Ptolemy's model. Now you might ask, was Copernicus the first to propose a heliocentric model? The answer is no. The credit there goes to Aristarchus of Samos, an ancient Greek who proposed his heliocentric model around 250 BC. However, for the next 2,000 years, popular opinion overwhelmingly favored the geocentric model of Aristotle and Ptolemy. <laughs>